Welcome back. In this video, I will show you how to create 3D printable hinges with Blender geometry nodes. First, you have to download my blend file and open it with Blender version 3.2. So let's do that. And once that file is open, you will see the four steps that I've also included here as 3D objects to remind you how to do it. And let's follow them step by step. So the first is to add a mesh, a plane, and I will scale it by 10. So we have something that has a length of 20 by 20 millimeters, for example. Let's make it a little bit wider and multiply it along the y-axis by 1.5. So we have three centimeters by two centimeters. And this plane will, um, will be our ground specification, how the, the leaves will look like. So if you want something more fancy, for example, like this, um, that will work too. So how do we proceed? We go into the geometry node editor here on the left. We'll add a new geometry node and from the top we can drag the hinge generator group and drag it onto the green line here. And we can see we already have our hinge. So let's remove my face so we can take a closer look at the, the settings here. So what can we adjust? The first is the knuckle resolution. So those three things here are the knuckles. And if you want it to be smoother, we can set it, for example, to 48. I'll leave it at 32 because adding more detail will increase the complexity of this node and the result will be longer times for this geometry node to calculate. So this is fairly slow because it uses a couple of Boolean operators. So if you go into the menu here, and at timings, you will see how long it, it takes to give you an orientation. The first was the knuckle resolution. Then we can specify how many knuckles we would like. For example, five. And instead of three, we have four knuckles. And yeah, depending on your use case, you can adjust that. Next step is the knuckle radius. So here it's set to three millimeters. If we set it, for example, to five millimeters, we can see that the hinge itself is becoming a lot, lot sturdier. Let's put it back to three millimeters. What else? The knuckle gap. So I've set this to 0 0.2 millimeters and for my use case that worked out. Um, maybe you want to uh, use a lower value here of 0.1 for example because your printer is more accurate or in the opposite case give it some more space so you don't have to clean the print afterwards. Then the knuckle leaf margin. This is the, the distance between, let's go to front view. Well, this didn't help. Um, the distance between the knuckle itself and the leaf. And depending on, on this distance determines how far you can open the hinge. So if we increase this to 0.5, we will be able to bend those leaves a lot further. And yeah, that, that, that's the first group of, of settings that manipulate the, the size and spacings of the knuckles of the hinge. Then the next step is to specify the pin radius. For example, if you want to use a three millimeter screw, we will use a radius of 1.5 and this will increase the radius here on the inside. And if you want to use a print in place pin, just click this checkbox and you will see that there's a pin going through all those knuckles attached to the, out, the, the, the first and the last one. What's important here on, on, on this setting is that make sure that the knuckle resolution, uh, not the knuckle resolution, but the number of knuckles is not even because otherwise you will have this floating pin here at the end. So if you do it print in place, make sure that the number of knuckles is uneven. And what does, does this generate? So if we go into top view and go into transparent mode, you can see that the, the pin is connected on the first, the middle and the, the last knuckle here. And here we can see that gaps are generated between the pin and the knuckle so that it's actually not connected. And we can adjust this by the, the clearance here also with this value. And you can see here those lines move because the, the pin in place clearance was increased. Now, if you don't want to use a print in place pin, but you want to use um, a screw, you can check the second box here, force pin clearance, which will generate the same alternating clearances between the knuckles. 
but we'll give you the option to use a screw instead so the screw will all only be attached to the even knuckles inside and the first and the last knuckle will have some room to add um, a washer here at the end and uh, sink the screw head into the hinge here in the front and let's continue what so that's uh, one option here is knuckle smoothing so that adds those ramps here on the side you can adjust how wide those smoothing ramps are so if i set this to five you can see that the distance from the spreading across the leaf increases and if you want to have it really really flat just set the smoothing value to one so it's just a diagonal ramp or if you want to have it really really rounded turn add something higher and you will get something like this this value here the leaf thickness is quite interesting because well, not only does it increase the leaf thickness, but also inside the modifier checks if the leaf thickness is higher than the, the knuckle smoothing here. The knuckle smoothing is not applied because it will be hidden by this geometry here. And um, for example, if we take a leaf thickness of five, you'll get well, a really thick hinge, but no knuckle smoothing. So the knuckle smoothing is excluded automatically. So the geometry doesn't break when exporting to your favorite slicing software. And the last six values are to uh, adjust the front insert and the back insert. So in the default settings, the front insert radius is set to two. If we set it to 1.5, you can see we see nothing because the pin radius is also 1.5. So they're exactly the same. So if we reduce the pin radius to one again, you can see this would work like this. And Let's go back to two and we can also adjust how deep we want to insert the screw head into the, the front piece and also the resolution. So for example, if you want to use a hex nut in this case, just set the resolution to six or to something that is not equal the knuckle resolution here. So I've set the default here for the knuckle resolution to 32 and the front insert resolution to 31 because what happens is if they're exactly the same size we'll get some boolean mesh cut errors uh, which doesn't happen all the time but if you see something looking funny at this point here just make sure that the, those resolutions differ and um, the, the same it works the same for the, the, the back piece here you can play around and generate your hinge exactly like you want it to look like so this is the first step so we have the, the hinge generator now we want to add those screw holes here let's go into top view and align the 3d cursor to the model what you'll have to do is add another plane and go into edit mode and then scale the plane to the size you would like it to have to do what so i'm using this plane here as a reference object to where vertices should go so let's align this to uh, let's move those into place i'm moving those edges here snapping them to the middle and i'm moving them down by 10 millimeters so in the middle of so they're exactly in the middle of those leaves here and what i'm doing is i'm going to delete this vertex here and those i will move a little bit to the side that's too much just one more millimeter like this and let's see how this will go so the vertices of this object here of this plane plane 003 in this case will specify where the screws will go so now we go um, back at the top view and back into the wait in edit mode back into the geometry node here of this leaf and we're going to move the output a little bit to the side and going to drag the screw generator into this editor here what we'll also need is uh, a mesh boolean which we will drop in here, which is set to default to difference. And to use the screw generator, we need a geometry, which is our target, which is the, the object we want to add screws to. And we need a point source that is our references to where our screws should be. So if we check again, this is plane 003. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this plane 003 and drop it into this geometry node editor, which will give us this object info node. And then we can use the geometry of this object info node and plug it into point source. And the result of this screw generator is the Boolean cutter and the hex heads. The Boolean cutter is what we want in this case. 
which will provide us with the screw holes that we want to cut into this object. Now we can see the holes are not exactly where I would like them to be at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute this node here and then go to this mesh and then into edit mode and start moving them around. And you can see that it's, it's still fairly slow. So muting this node has not the desired effect. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is, but um, I think if we just disable this, well also doesn't have. So you have to keep in mind that editing this, this, this stuff is a bit slow because of all the Boolean operations. But um, as long as you keep to editing manually by inserting, uh, typing in the, the, the distances you would like to move things, it's, it's fairly okay. So I'm going to grab those vertices by uh, an amount of one along the x-axis, maybe once more, right, almost. It is fairly slow, but much quicker than editing all this manually. I'm going to do the same with this line here grab by one millimeter along the x-axis and I think I duplicated them somehow. I'm a bit clumsy with the keyboard when I'm recording videos. Anyhow, so that's that. So not sure if this would make sense, but I think it shows you that we can create our mesh this way. So where the, gr the, the ground plane of the, the leaf definition is does not really matter. So you can move it to the side and you can still see what you're doing and if you want to adjust the corners and round them by for example the factor of two shift control b and then scrolling the mouth wheel will bevel the vertices and will give you nice and round corners here so we can still see that the the right hand side the right leaf is not uh, cut with the holes yet so for this we have to go into the screw generator and click mirror x and then we'll have them on both sides all those steps are again written down here. So it's step one, add a plane and resize it to your size. One blender unit, I always treat one blender unit as one millimeter. Uh, so if you export it STL, it has the correct size. Then at the geometry norm modifier hinge generator, which is this one here, we added here. Add another plane for the reference for the screws and add the screw generator. If you want to create mockups where you can see how the screws would look like. I also added an output of the screw generator that if we had a join geometry node, drop it here and use connect those. It also generates hex screws so you can see how it would look like depending on the leaf hinges and so on. So what can we modify here with the screw generator? So we have two groups of values that we can we can configure. So the first group here starts with Boolean, which defines the, the Boolean object that is used to uh, the, 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 the Boolean cutter object and uh, should be bigger than the, the screws that the, the, the screw heads, the hex heads that you can define with the second half. So we have here the shaft radius is the radius of the, the, the actual screw part. And then we have the head radius, well, which is obvious the, the radius here on top. And then we can also specify the height of this and uh, the length of the, the screw itself, how deep it should cut into the object. And then here we can specify how deep this, this cut should be, how, how deep the, the screw itself should be inserted into the object. For example, let's remove the joint geometry so we can see what we're doing here again. If I'm modifying the head height, for example, to four, we can see that nothing has changes because th the head height goes to the top. So for example, if you have a really, really big object and you need to insert your screws deeper into that object, you'll need a really long head that is cut out for the, the screw to be inserted in. And the actual depth of the screw, how, how deep it is inserted, starting from the edge of the screw head connected to the screw shaft is this value here. So if we reduce this to 0.5 millimeters, we can see that this cutout is shallower. And again, we have the head height, head radius, and if I enable this node here again, we can adjust this here. The hex radius is the radius of this circle in the, side, in the center, and how deep this should be cut off of the squared if you want to adjust for a different size of hex screw. You can also use the, the screw modifier to um, place 
screws onto objects so it doesn't have to be a plane onto, onto a plane so in this case here I'm using the the, the screw modifier just to generate uh, the hex head and I have a circle here as a reference and I can move this circle here around and you can see that the screws are placed on top of the normals. So if you for example used my 3D box generator to create a circular box and want to um, screw the top onto the, the, the bottom half by screwing them not vertically into the box but from the sides horizontally you could just add a ring around the the boxes and add the screw modifier and those screws would be placed around that. For example, if I edit this and add a sphere, uh, a cylinder, wait, where is the cylinder? Let's move it in place. Wait, that's so I've added a cylinder and in edit mode I can move those vertices in place and you can see those screws will be placed around the closest face aligning to its normals. And I could also now here unmute the boolean cutter and you will see it would cut out the boolean holes here and if I mute the geometry join node we can see those would be the cuts it would make into the object. So this is something I, I really like to use often to um, place screws into objects that need to be connected. Alright, if you've watched this video so far I think you've got the hang of this. And if you open the blend file, you will have those four reminders again to tell you what to do. And um, feel free to type in whatever value you would like to uh, pay for this when you downloaded it. It's for free, so you don't have to pay anything. But if you think this will save you a bunch of time, feel free to pay for it as much as you like. All right, that's it. I've printed one of these already. So if we go to my different camera, I can show you. Where is it? It's this one. So I printed this tiny hinge here with a clearance of 0.2 millimeters on my 3D printer. And you can close it. And as I mentioned earlier, it depends on the clearance between the knuckles and the leaves, how far you can open those hinges. So this one, the, the 0.2 millimeters in this case, restricted to be almost 180 degrees when open. Alright, thank you very much for watching, I hope I see you next time and if you get bored and need something to read, go check out my, well, to point in that direction, science fiction book that I wrote, Master Dividers, my background image is the book cover. Alright, see you next time, bye bye.